everybody. Nice to see you. Nah, you can see me. Doesn't matter. Anyway, Andy, would you please come a bit closer? We yeah. can't see you from there. Oh, welcome. Finally he's arrived. So, during the next week, Andy and I want to explore the Book of Esther a bit with you together. And to start off with, would you please give us some fast facts? So, 20 seconds are enough? Yeah. Okay, starting now. So, the Book of Esther is about a Jewish girl called Esther. And she lives in Persia because the Persians have captured the Jews and taken them to Persia. And we're going to see that in the Book of Esther, God isn't mentioned even once. But the main message of the book is that even when God isn't mentioned or isn't seen, he's still in charge of everything. Thank you very much. So now we want to go directly into the book and we start with the first two chapters. So if you haven't got your Bible with you now, it doesn't matter. Either you click on the link in the description below or you're going to pause the video now and search and find your Bible at home and just read it. It's a great book. It's really brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. So shall we start now? Let's go. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes, king of the Persian Empire. After feasting for a full 180 days, he gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded to bring before him Queen Vashti in order to display her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. But Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger, so King Xerxes consulted his wise men and nobles. According to law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? She has not obeyed my command. Then Mimukin, the king's adviser, replied, Queen Vashti has done wrong. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let it be written in the laws of the Medes and the Persians that Vashti is removed from her position as queen and replaced by someone else who is better than she. The king and his nobles were pleased with this advice, so the king did as Mimukin proposed. Now there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai. Mordecai had a cousin named Esther, who he had brought up as his own daughter after her mum and dad died. Eventually she was chosen as one of the candidates for the new queen. Esther didn't reveal her nationality or family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Mordecai himself waited in front of the king's gates for the news about Esther. When it was Esther's turn to go in front of the king, she won favour with him, more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. The whole time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. During the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, he found out about a plot against King Xerxes and told Esther, who in turn told the king, giving credit to Mordecai. All this was recorded in the royal history books in the presence of the king. Okay, so the story starts with Xerxes firing his queen and then searching for a new one. So who is Xerxes? So Xerxes is the king or the emperor of the Persian Empire, a big empire in this time. They took the Jews and other people as captives and this King Xerxes isn't a really good king, so he is drunk, he's showing off and making a couple of really, really bad decisions. So we should bear in mind for the rest of the story, he is not the most brilliant king. So it's a story of a bad king making selfish decisions. So where is God in all of this? That's actually a good question. So on the first look, the story is basically about Xerxes and what happens in his empire. But when we look closer, we see God working through the whole story somewhere in the background and working without us seeing it. So we see he's still sovereign, he's still in charge, but we can't see it. So are you saying that God works through our decisions and he's still in charge? Yeah, so we see stuff happen, what isn't really maybe good, but God is using it, as we will see later. Um, have you ever played chess? Yeah. So, I've got a really good picture about this all, but I need a chessboard. Shall we go to the big chessboard up there? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, there we are. Axel, what are we doing on a massive chessboard? It's impressive, isn't it? So, as you see, a match is going on. And the basic game of chess is, if you are the white one, you want to set the black king Checkmate. Um, a good chess player is able to use the moves of his opponent to accomplish his plan and his strategy and finally win. Same as with God. He uses the moves we humans make to accomplish his plan. And so as we see, uh, the order is as follows. Uh, 
ordinary girl Esther is promoted as queen. And Mordecai is placed in a really good position with saving the king's life. And as we will see later on, this is going to be really, really important. And this is how it works. God uses those bad decisions of Xerxes during the first two chapters, and the bad decision of those gods which want to kill him, to get kind of a preset a situation where he can act and accomplish his own plan. So if I apply this to my life, are you saying that I might find myself in a situation where something happens to me? Uh, let's say, for example, I'm in lockdown and I'm, um, I have to spend loads of time with these five really crazy people um, and I can't do much. Are you saying that God's still uh, in control, that he's still in charge and he's using it to accomplish his plan? Yeah, yeah. So you might find yourself in a strange situation. Thank God you're not with five crazy people. But you might find yourself in lockdown now or in other strange situations and you don't know why it happens to you and it doesn't feel at all like God is in charge. But we can know and the whole story of Esther is telling us that he is in charge, that he is sovereign and in control of every situation. But to be honest, sometimes I find it really hard to trust in God and to know that he's in charge. It's like a battle inside of me. Like, what do I do with all these doubts I have? So, this is a normal experience. And the good thing is our Father in Heaven knows about it. And we can ask him for a heavenly peace in our selves, in our mind, in our heart. And for a certainty that we know God is in charge and He is sovereign. And the amazing thing is, He's going to give it to you. You're going to find this heavenly peace inside of your heart. And you will know He is in charge, He is in control, He is sovereign. So I can trust in God that He's in control even when I don't understand. And I can ask Him to deal with these doubts, all of them that I have. Okay, that's for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Like every YouTuber says, like and subscribe. And we see you in the next video. See you. Bye.